The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're going to be talking about the Albany Institute. We have with us Tamis Graf. She is the executive director, and Elizabeth Bichand. She's the head of the museum shop. So welcome. Thank you. Welcome Thank back. You. Glad to be here. We're going to be talking about current and ongoing and upcoming exhibits and events and news and what go, what is going on in the um, the museum shop. So Tamis, let me start with you. The big event. It just opened in September. It's there until April 3rd. Capital, the capital region and 50 objects. This, um, in our library here, we have all kinds of books, you know, World War I and 100 objects, the history of baseball in 50. And tell us how, the, how this started, the idea. And I, I realized this was like a three-year process. So tell me all about how this got going. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, your books that are in the library, it has been a very popular way to do an exhibition or a book. And to my mind, it really started with the British Museum in London, and they decided to tell the history of civilization in 100 objects yeah, I think from, that was, from their collection. That was the first one. Yeah. That was the first one. And then you know it came to New York, New York, and the New York Historical Society did 50 objects about the city of New York. The Smithsonian then did 101 objects about mm -hmm. the history of uh, America. So the Albany Institute, we thought, well, okay. you know, we should do 50 objects of the capital region, and we define the capital regions as the four counties, Albany, Schenectady, Rensselaer, and Troy. And you're taking in... What, 400 years of history? Is that the? Oh, 400 plus. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, <laughs> so so the, the, the way it worked is we invited uh, uh, historical societies, libraries, uh, individuals to really think about this, and we emailed about 60 people to come up with the original ideas. Then we began working with the Times Union, and one of the reporters, Amy B. and Coley, decided to do a call out to the community. And I see they did um, they did five separate five separate call-outs, yes, okay. yeah, but they were theme-based, but the idea is what makes the capital region distinctive? Okay. What are the events, the people, the objects, the places uh, that really distinguish the capital region? So she got hundreds of uh, uh, ideas, and we had a team, and we basically created this exhibition based on community response. Okay, so the TU, they had hundreds of items. The, the 60 museums and the people that you, how many did they well, everybody Possibly. made recommendations. Oh, okay. You know, everybody was so making recommendations, and there was lots of crossover and that type of thing. So ultimately, there was a team that really came up with the 50 you, based on the communities. Do you know what they whittled it down from? What they started? Oh with? yeah, okay. and you know, here's the deal: if we had, you know, we have three hundred, three thousand five hundred square feet of exhibition for fifty objects. Had we had another three thousand square feet, we would have had a hundred objects. Oh, okay. I mean, there were lots and lots of things to choose from, all if right. you can imagine. But one thing I want to share with you: all the curators, all the historians, were listing all the objects, and I'm just going to go right under here. <laughs> the the most popular piece from the community was Nipper, okay. and we didn't have that on our list. This is why you need the community working with you, oh, you to mean, create. When you guys <laughs> in the museum started, Nipper didn't come up? Nipper wasn't on and our then, yet That came up more than any other? It, yes, uh, it was the number one really? uh, uh, suggestion from people. And it was great. It's As I say, it's exactly why you want the I community think, involved. I would think, How could we forget? I know. Did Uncle Sam <laughs> come up a lot? Oh, yes. All right. Yes. I, I yes. think yes. I'm right. <laughs> But it was Nipper, you know, the, the dog. You know. So once you, now that you have what I mean, you must have had hundreds or thousands, you had one committee that? We, we had a committee that picked the topics. Okay. And then the curatorial staff okay. at the Albany Institute, with assistance from people, we went out and selected the one object that would represent okay. that and idea, then, that person, that uh, event, 
uh, place or that type of thing. Yeah, and so if when you come to the exhibition, you'll see one object, and then behind each object is a large photographic blow-up that provides some sort of context okay. to the story. So we really have 50 stories now, regarding that. When, the when they were choosing, were these meetings with... Did they get kind of raucous? Were there any fist fights about? Uh... <laughs> no, no, it was so civil. Okay. <laughs> you know, most people agreed. You know that that was just it. And you know, there were a couple of things that we couldn't find the object that would best represent it. I mean, how are you going to find an object for nanotechnology? Okay. I mean, you know, so there were a couple of things along okay. that line. But for the most part, you know, it was uh, it worked out really well. And the goal was to have what you would expect. You know, okay. something related to the the railroads and the Erie canal and uh, steamboats but then the actually the objects selected was, was kind of interesting oh, okay. not so you, what you would expect right. so you had you have a theme and then you have an object representing that mm -hmm. but what I wanted to ask you I was looking through the list of all 50 many of the um, objects are very important to American history like the Erie Canal and the WGY the first radio station mm -hmm. and Emma Willard and all that and many are only significant I think to us who were raised here, like uh, Fryhofer's is in here as an example. Exactly. Were you trying to balance if something had national or local significance, or was it a, were you just trying to come up with, a, was that a factor? Uh, you know, we were, obviously you want to, um, you know, really look at the region and look at what we should be really proud of in terms of national significance. But okay. then that local history that people are going to identify with, I mean, you, the Fryhoffers or the Hoffman's Playland, yeah. Nipper, you know, those are, you know, really hometown. They're kind of the inside, but uh, they really had an effect on people growing up. So I would think with all these people, Fryhoffers must have came up a lot in these. <laughs> yeah, Fryhoffers was, in these, in and these. there were others too. Um, but you know, Fryhoffers, people had a lot of memories associated okay. with it. Well, the the exhibit opens September nineteenth. It's there till April third. Um, right now, we're in the middle of October. What's what has the response been so far? You, know, you had many months to go. But. Yeah. I, well, I think the Nipper. Everybody says, of course, Nipper, and Nipper <laughs> is front and center when you walk in. Oh, okay. I think probably the biggest surprise. I think there are three that I think are, are four that I think are interesting that people weren't um, aware of, and one is Uncle Sam came okay. up all the time, as you can imagine. And what do you represent, Uncle Sam? with. We were fortunate to get from the Rensselaer County Historical Society to have his chamber pot. Oh, okay. And that's not exactly <laughs> what you would think of, but it was no. such an iconic object, or an iconic iconic. So you man. might have something so, with the meat packing or something. Well, <laughs> so we have the I Want You poster in the background. So it sort of makes people chuckle. Yeah, okay. Makes people laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it's a great object, and it's a great story. Uh, another ob uh, material uh, object, which is from the Grafton Library, is an anti-rent flag or banner from oh, okay. Simba, uh, representing the anti-rent wars from 1831, uh, excuse me, 1839. And that was just a very rare banner that uh, was saved just by luck. In fact, it had been used as a curtain. Okay. And this is the time period where um, on the Van Rensselaer Manor, people had to you know, give um, money on an am annual basis. And when Stephen Van Rensselaer um, died, uh, they thought that was going to be the end of it. And this oh, okay. is 1839, and the, uh, the family decided to really go out and collect the rents. And people who lived and worked on that land for many, many years protested. And it, their protests really brought the end to uh, that practice. Do you know how it ended up at the Grafton Library? I think it's the smallest library in our whole yeah, library. It's, <laughs> uh, well, and, uh, you know, a family, family oh, okay. had it, they found it, and they gave it to the library. And it's been okay. beautifully conserved and preserved, oh. and I thought that was really an extraordinary um, okay. object uh, um, to have in the it's, exhibition. It's very striking. Yeah, it's striking graphically. Image. And then what was the third? You were going to mention three? Um, well, there's something called a Wittenagamont tree, oh. <laughs> the Wittenagamont peace tree, oh, okay. and that occurred near the Knickerbocker Mansion, and 
that is a peace tree that was planted in 1673 by the English. It's an English tradition, and you would plant it if there was a peace treaty that was uh, agreed upon, and in this case it was with various Native Americans against the French, and this oh, is a okay. time period where the French was very interested in um, you know, controlling and owning uh, colonial America, and had they been successful, we'd all be speaking French today. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the only example of a peace treaty tree uh, in this country. And I just think it's amazing. And there's a photograph of it, and there's part of the tree. It stood until 1941 when there were oh, okay. floods. So I, I think that was one of the, again, one of the surprising um, objects in the exhibition. And then I, surprising stories, I should say. For the 50 objects, were you, again, were you trying to balance the different centuries, or you just you, you came up with what? You know, uh, it was a little bit of everything, but we also were really looking at the four counties. You know, the Albany Institute, mm -hmm. people think Albany. We're only focused on Albany, the city of Albany, Albany County, but really our mission is much okay. broader, and we really wanted to represent the region because you, it's, uh, a, you know, uh, it's the region that tells the story from the Revolutionary War to the Erie Canal. I mean, it may start in Albany, but the locks go out through um, you know, Schenectady County and that type of thing. Well, so, if um, you mentioned Hoffman's Playland, in order to, because it made the sort of list or the objects, did that get mentioned a lot in all the surveys? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that was mentioned. <laughs> you know, you, you, we had hundreds of uh, responses. Okay. And another person that was mentioned was Bill Kennedy, okay. the author right. Bill Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually came to the Albany Institute and spoke for two hours along with an artist from our region, Michael Oatman, about creativity. And I see, for to represent him, you have William Kennedy's typewriter, Mm -hmm. Not his word processor, because he, he was from the, <laughs> he was It was the his typewriter, day. yes, yeah. Uh, a Smith Corona typewriter. And a photograph of him in front of the typewriter. Okay, well, um, I'll just say that this, the um, exhibit goes to April 3rd. There's, I'm looking at the list. I think it looks very interesting. You've got all kinds of things. I don't, I don't, we don't want to go into all of them. We want people to come, but it's pretty amazing some of the things in here. A lot of people don't know, or maybe they do. WGY was the first radio station in America, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, okay. yeah. So you have something representing we that. We have an early uh, microphone from WGY, oh, okay. and you know, then we could have picked the tele television as well. I mean, it was very That's early. That's right. GE is represented. Oh. GE is represented right. represented by a monitor top refrigerator okay. from the 1950s. So people who go might recognize that monitor top, and the monitor. It was called the monitor top because the top of the refrigerator resembles the top of the, um, the ironclad monitor that was oh, okay. used by the North right. in the uh, Civil War. So, you know, everything is based on historical precedent uh. one way or the other. The other thing we have is uh, vicarious visions. So we have the latest of the Vicarious Visions uh, games, and that's a major company in oh, our a computer, area. a computer game. Computer game, yeah. yeah okay. They did Video Guitar game. Hero and a variety of other things. So that was so. done in our area. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Internationally known company. You know what another international known company is? You'd oh. be very surprised <laughs> yes. in the late 19th century, uh, the Wheeler family invented or patented perforated wrapping paper. Do you know oh, what good. that really? might be? <laughs> well, I, there you go, Beth. Sorry. <laughs> so it's toilet paper. Okay. That so that, too, was an international company, and we sent toilet paper all around the world. <laughs> well, I think people forget how historic our area is. I think, of course, Erie Canal and everything. So, all right. So that's the capital region and 50 objects. It sounds like it's, does it take up several rooms? Uh, yeah, th 3,500 okay. square feet. So three rooms, and one of them is huge. Okay, and then mm -hmm. so it's there till April 3rd, and the Albany Institute's open. You can go to their web page. Um, and we're, we're going to talk a little bit later about Thanksgiving vacation. It's um, free admission. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, right. But let's Great. go to Elizabeth. Okay. Um, you are the museum shop manager, yes. and you sell... Things we love help. Well, um, the shop um, we sell a very eclectic mix of books, cards, prints, toys, puzzles, jewelry, textiles, and crafts that reflect our region's rich and diverse history. So all of the topics that Tamis mentioned that were in fifty objects, we have merchandise related. Okay, but okay. I didn't. Couldn't well, bring the whole story. I, I know I tried, <laughs> but um, you know we have Uncle Sam magnets. We have uh, 
things related to the Dutch. We have things related to um, Henry Burden's ironworks. So, um, but what I tried to bring today, because a lot of people don't know that we represent more than 50 area artists with the crafts that we sell, even though we have a very small so space. A lot all the crafts that you'll show in a second, we are, sell most of them are local. A lot of okay. crafts, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, the crafts we carry are all local oh, artists. Okay. And I brought a few just to mention, um, uh, and I Why will tie show, them in. Show this well, I will start with that one. Okay. Okay, we'll start with this one. Um, you can hold it up. So. The museum shop right now has a display of some very, very beautiful hooked rugs. Oh, okay. um, this is a very old tradition. Um, and the women who make these, they're from Chatham. They call themselves the Chatham Hookers. Okay. Um, in particular, this one was made by Ruth Anderson. They buy all the wool new, so it's $40 a yard. This is an example of um, beautiful, beautiful handmade yeah, work. Very nice. You can see the influence of early co co colonial styles. Um, and we have a wonderful display with five different artists and some small hooked rugs okay. in the shop. Um, we also also have another piece that I brought, and this does tie into the uh, Home for the Holidays Thanksgiving okay. weekend, where we have three ad free admission, just, Friday, yep. Saturday, okay. and Sunday. Um, and Pamela Dalton is a very well-known artist, uh, Sharon Schnitt is uh, the artwork that she does. It's an early American paper cutting. It was very popular in the Pennsylvania okay, so Dutch that, that's region. paper? It's paper. Right. I was looking at it earlier. It I, thought it, was, I thought it was is, cloth or something. This is right. one of her rural scenes, okay. and she will have an exhibition of her work up that oh, weekend, okay. and she will also be doing a book signing in the shop on Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. Um, she does several books for children that oh, are okay. based on her paper cutting work. Um, we have many, many other artists who do jewelry, ceramics, um, ornaments, um, all sorts of things. I, I would love for you to come to the well, shop. Well, I've been sit. down to, it's a, it's a pretty big shop. It's, it's a big shop. We fit a lot in. And one of the reasons we carry crafts is because I really want to encourage um, we really want to encourage kids and adults to be creative themselves. So we have to encourage creativity. We have coloring books. We have puzzles for both adults and kids. A best-selling book for us right now is called Art Before Breakfast, A Zillion Ways to Be More Creative No Matter How Busy okay. You Are. I mean, and... Um, Oh, there's the example of Art Before Breakfast. Okay. Um, we have a, a, a sketchbook called My Museum, where you sketch uh, your collections into museum-style cases. Okay. And so, you know, we really hope that people who want creative gifts come to visit us. Um, we are not just kids um, or um, girls. We have creative things for boys. In fact, um, Tamis mentioned Vicarious Visions. Um, on November 15th, we will be having a book program with Kathy Searcy, and her new book is Video Games, Design and Code Your Own Adventure. And she's going to do an interactive family program where parents and kids can work with her to take an idea and do a museum adventure video game from beginning to okay. end. And was that November 17th? November 15th, okay. yeah. Okay. And that's, again, we do programs with uh, local authors all the time, um, and that's just Well, I know over coming. the summer, um, you guys have all kinds of activities we, for kids. Yes, all, we do all, all year summer. long, okay. not just in not the just summer. summer. Okay. Um, all year long, every Saturday, um, there's an art making activity oh, okay. um, on uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, the first Christmas card, Tamas didn't even get to mention in 50 <laughs> Objects, the first Christmas card ever produced was produced by um, a gentleman named Peace in Albany. What's his first name? Uh, Henry, Richard. Richard Peace. Mm -hmm. And we will have that first Christmas card on display in 50 Objects, and the Education Department has some really fun art-making okay. activities so for kids. I didn't, one of the, one of the, I didn't read the whole list. One of them is the Christmas card started here? Yes. Oh. yes. Well, the first commercial, <laughs> commercial right. Christmas card right. was uh, uh, the idea, and it was designed, printed, and sold in a store called the Temple of Fancy okay. down on Broadway. <laughs> Well, I'm getting a whole history lesson here. <laughs> okay. yes. well, well, the museum shop very much, I think of it as a history lesson yeah. as well. And so the next thing that I brought, we, Tamis didn't get to mention, we do have a wonderful library collection. 
And right now, our library exhibit is called Lincoln in Albany. Uh, Lincoln visited Albany on two occasions, once when he was on his way to Washington to be inaugurated, mm -hmm. and again, the funeral train passed through Albany. And we have some wonderful artifacts in our library display related to It's the a whole Lincoln. exhibit. It's, which, a, yes. it's a library exhibit in cases. And I did bring, a lot of people don't realize, uh, we do sell books. This is an older book, but because it's so pertinent to the history of Albany, I carry it all the time. Henry and Clara were from Albany, and they were the couple that was with Mary Todd Lincoln and Lincoln they in the booth. They were in the booth, the booth yes. When, mm -hmm. when Lincoln was shot. Not in the and booth, so people the, might yeah. forget about this book, but when we have visitors come from outside the area, I like that we have it, even though it's old, because they'll get a sense of the history yeah. of Albany, which is amazing. And then speaking of um, Lincoln, Lincoln uh, appointed Robert Prine, who is from Colony, yes, and the Prine, Prine House. House. He was raised in the Prine House. His father built it. And he was the first ambassador to Japan. So for example, when we carry things related to Robert Prine and Japan, I have a beautiful handmade box. Um, by Meredith Butler, and she's using beautiful handmade Japanese papers. We have another artist, and her name is Marie Quozo, and she does jewelry, which is a braiding, a Japanese braiding technique called kumaho. So how many artists are represented? Oh, over there? 50. Over 50, And okay. it, it, it goes up and down. All right. you know, for the holidays, we bring in lots of things. So um, we have, for example, the kind of ornaments we sell for the holiday. These right. are little um, textile kimono ornaments. So even when we're talking about the history, we try to bring in contemporary crafts that help us tell that story. And then do you have so, items relating to your ever-popular Egyptian? I, I, <laughs> I had to bring some Egyptian things just because they are are very popular. Our mummies have been on display continually for over a year, um, and they are among the most popular items in the collection. I do have, we always carry um, jewelry. Okay, um, this particular piece, oh, well, I'll try to hold it up, is a local artist, Louis, or Louise Benetsky, and she was a ceramicist, but she started fusing glass in her kiln, and she likes to do Egyptian collar style jewelry made out okay. of fused glass. So that's an example of a contemporary piece. We also carry museum reproduction Egyptian jewelry. We carry um, great fun things like canopic jars, glass perfume bottles, all made in Egypt. So we carry the Egyptian craftsmen okay. as well as American craftsmen. I brought two books. Just out in paperback is Kara Cooney's The Woman Who Would Be King about Hatshepsut. And Kara Cooney did a wonderful lecture at our museum last year. And it's a, a very interesting book that tells the history of a woman in power in ancient Egypt. And just for fun, we also have for kids, this is a book called Mummy Cat. And this is just was also just released. And it tells the story of Hatshepsut and her cat. Okay. Um, <laughs> cats and dogs are very popular well, they used in museum to, they shops. Used to, um, I don't know what the they, word is, mummify the right, pets, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. we have mummified cat or dog. Um, uh, dog. Currently, it used to be a cat, but yes. then we had a cat scan, right. and okay. it turned out to be a dog. You know. Sorry, I remember that. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're as, almost as busy as the rest of the museum. Oh, very busy. And Tam, she sets up her exhibits, and they stay put in the shop. People take okay. apart my exhibits and buy everything and take it home, and we redo them again. So if I have time oh, for sure, one sure. more, I just really wanted to end talking about um, cats. Well, nipper is very popular, and we do sell nipper magnets. We have the wonderful nipper sign. Um, I don't know if people know the story of nipper. He's not just a dog on top of a building in Albany. Uh, this it was an advertising image for Victor Victrola, the yeah, uh, photograph RCA. machines. RCA. The painting that was done was called His Master's Voice. I don't didn't write down the artist's name, but it was a British painting. And it, the dog is hearing his master's voice on the phonograph for the first time. Okay. And so many people come in, and they don't actually know the whole story of Nipper. He's not just a dog. He is a dog representing that moment when technology captured human voice. So I feel like our exhibits tell, even though everything tells a bigger story. Mm -hmm. And I really like how our exhibits, because they're art and history, they do come together oh, okay. to really tell that story. So we sell nipper magnets, nipper plaques. We sell nipper candy. Um, a lot of fun. See, Tamish, you nice didn't know screen. nipper was so popular. And then I, I know. If Can you, you believe need it? your own <laughs> nipper, um, we do sell prints from our okay. collection. So on our website, there are over 1,600 images. And people can look at those images, and we s reproduce them in four sizes by 
really? special okay. order. Mm -hmm. So um, if you like the Dutch, if you like anything in our collection, we have wonderful works, paintings and works, and we do sell them okay. as reproductions. Yes, it, it is. Um, um, yes, so. no, it's a wonderful gift shop, and it's, well, it's, a, good, it's a good example. I know you yeah. couldn't... I had we more, never, I but we couldn't fit it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tamis, coming up, um, maybe you could talk a little bit about this. It opens November 21st, and it's going through till next September 2016, and this is called Masterworks. It's almost 225 years of collecting from your whole archive. Now, this may take longer than um, the 35, than um, the 50 objects. You have 35,000 items, over 1 million documents. Mm -hmm. Now, did you start this 10 years ago, planning for this, or <laughs> how long ago did you? Well, um, really, these are some of the highlights of the museum's collection. Of your whole history. Of our whole, okay. uh, of our collection. So it'll range from the 17th century to the present. So I think that'll be fun just to see what people, uh, what the Albany Institute has collected all of that time. And our mission is that we collect art, decorative arts, historical artifacts and, uh, related to the art history and culture of the Upper Hudson Valley. So you know, it'll be diff certainly different than the 50 yeah. objects. It's really looking at the strengths of the museum's collection. And so how is this going to be, how are you deciding over a million and 35,000? Oh, you know, that's, you know, <laughs> picking out the, you know, the, there'll probably be, you know, I'm going to say 150 or 175 okay. objects in, in this uh, exhibition. And there are things that, again, just as you would pick the, 50 stories to tell okay. the history of the capital region. You could pick 100 objects to tell the story of the museum's collection and the people who have lived and worked here and worked here. But the key for this exhibition, which is what you, you would, we were talking about a little while ago, is we are going to be celebrating our 225th anniversary in two, okay. 2016. So the idea of bringing out uh, masterworks from 225 collect, uh, uh, years of collecting was really the goal. So, the, so that's right. The, a lot of people forget the museum goes back to what? It says 1791? 1791. We are the oldest museum in New York State, the second oldest in the country. The first being the Charleston Museum in South Carolina, which was founded in 1773. Okay. So, George Washington was in. Well, it sounds like the Albany Institute should have been one of the 50. Objects. We could have been. <laughs> oh, that's sort of promoting ourselves, yeah. right? But so, really, uh, it is. And one of the things that we're going to include in the exhibition is the history, how we started. Okay. Because when we opened our doors and George Washington was president, it was called the Society for the Promotion of Agriculture, Arts, and Manufacturing. Okay. So we've changed our name seven times. I can tell you a little bit more about this <laughs> another time because it's a really <laughs> it's a interesting history. Uh, but we didn't become the museum that people know, of, know, to, uh, know us today as until about 1926. And so, and how many people are working on this, picking the items? You have a whole. Oh, this one, there's probably three or four people I'll instead of a team of, okay. you know, 60. <laughs> well, when, or, that, when that opens, you, we come back and we'll talk about that. Um, just a quick question about it, though. One thing, what actually is the oldest item you guys have down there? Well, the mummies. <laughs> um, well, I don't. Oh, okay, yes. Well, now, I mean, if you take away the mummy, which fair yeah. enough. I mean, I, uh, we, I should have I, thought of that. It, I, I know. You know, it's uh, it's actually kind of a funny thing. But you know, when the museum uh, opened in 1907 is the time that we we acquired the mummies. And I'll okay. tell you about that another time. But the oldest thing uh, in the collection, an object, is a stained glass window from uh, 1695, thereabouts. And it was um, uh, housed in the first Dutch church in Albany. And that was the time when families acquired stained glass windows to represent and support the church. Oh, okay. Now, finally, I'm just going to mention one quick thing. This, this will come under the topic of the people have spoken. I notice you guys We'll be having a cafe opening soon. Is that? <laughs> oh yeah, the Krishan Cafe at the Albany Institute. We are very, very excited, and we're going to be um, actually opening up the room and starting putting up all of the architectural renderings and that type of thing uh, to announce the cafe. <laughs> and it is coming. We are going to have a pop-up Krishan's Cafe uh, for the home for the holidays, and we'll be opening. 
I'm going to say shortly thereafter because okay, okay. I don't have a date. <laughs> <laughs> and this was in response to? Um, this was in response to uh, when we did a strategic plan. We asked the community, what are you, you know, interested in? What, would you, what kind of amenities would you like to see okay. at the Albany Institute? And CAFE was really among the top choices. And Krishan's CAFE has been operating for 10 years on Lark Street. And uh, they are known for their wonderful pastries. Oh, okay. And at the Albany Institute, Institute, we will have their cakes and pastries and coffees and teas and soups and sandwiches. Okay, very good. I'm going to mention, so. I'm going to mention one more thing because it's in your little newsletter here. You have a new acquisition by a very well-known French impressionist, um, Maurice Utrillo. Utrillo, right? Just, yes. It's a, it's, to tell me about that one painting and how you came about it and where it'll be on, on display. Uh, well, um, the uh, Utrillo painting is owned, was, owned, is owned by, was owned by the Weinberg family, oh, members okay. of the Weinberg family. And they were living in Germany and they um, also German Jews and they had to leave the country. And a lot of their artwork was confiscated by the Nazis. And they, but they were allowed to bring out uh, this impressionist painting because it was considered to be de degenerate art. And they the, didn't the want the impressionists were right. Oh, the okay. impressionist <laughs> painters were all degenerate yeah. art, so they didn't. The Nazis didn't. They didn't care about that. So they were allowed to bring this painting out, and they lived in. Um, uh, England for a while, and ultimately settled in the Capital District. Okay. And they had it in their uh, home for many, many years. And the family spent a lot of time at the Albany Institute, and they really uh, appreciated the collections. In fact, one of the family members donated a small Ushapti from the 21st dynasty, the same dynasty as our uh -huh. Egyptian mummy. And then many, many years later, they decided to donate this uh, particular painting in honor of their parents and representing their time in Albany and their appreciation for the Albany Institute. Now, is that artist, is he one of the more well-known impressionists? I don't recognize uh, Well, he's not as well-known oh. as Monet <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some of the others, but certainly in the circle of oh, okay. impressionist artists, he's uh, very well-known. And he was the only painter that actually was from uh, Paris or Montmartre. Okay. which is where a lot of the Impressionist painters right, uh, well, lived and worked. Very good. Well, thanks once again for coming. The 50 Objects of the Capital Region. It's down at the Albany Institute until April 3rd, led by Nipper. And then opening <laughs> January, I'm sorry, November 21st, a 225-year, what, retrospective of the whole Albany Institute's <laughs> collection. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have more than 50 objects. Would you say about 150, maybe? I am going to, yes. <laughs> we don't know yet. And that's, that's opening November 21st. And that's going to go through to all the way next September. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the gift shop is always open. We're always open the same hours of the museum. Okay. And I would love to point out that um, there is no admission charge to come to the shop. When you buy at the shop, you're supporting both the craft okay. artists that we carry and the museum itself. And we do have a parking lot. It's at the corner of Elk and Dove. Um, it's usually it usually does have okay. spaces available, and so I hope that people will remember to shop at the museum, but also take time to see the wonderful exhibits. Yes, exhibitions. and then one other thing, Tam, is Thanksgiving weekend. It's free admission. Yes, home for the holidays, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is free admission. We will have art making activities. There will be reindeer in the lawn, right. Santa decorated trees, and Tom Nelson is going to give a lecture on the story behind America's first Christmas card okay, on excellent. Sunday. Very good. Okay, so the website will be on the screen. It's um, what it, it's Albany? www.albanyinstitute.org Albanyinstitute.org will be on the screen. Well, thanks for coming. You can also sign up to get an email, a weekly email that tells you what's going on so you won't miss any of these wonderful activities. Very good. Yep. Well, That's on a, the website. a lot going on down there. Yeah, there always is. All right, well, we will see you next time on Getting to Know You. Thank you. Thank you.